Steelers fans, welcome to another Playbook episode. This is Coach Kevin Smith, and today we're going to take a look at why Joey Porter Jr. is among the league's elite cornerbacks. Hey, if you get a chance before we do that, follow me over on Twitter at Coach's Call Sheet, where there's a lot going on. We've been doing play designs, we've been doing breakdowns of football terms, a segment we call Gridiron Glossary. A lot going on over there, so give me a follow if you get an opportunity there. All right, today on the playbook, Joey Porter Jr., who said recently that he believes he's already the best cornerback in the league. You love that confidence from a young guy. He may not be the best, but when you look at the film, you quickly realize he's among the elite. He's in that conversation already. So that's what we're going to do right now. Let's take a look at the film and what to tell us about Joey Porter Jr. All right, so all these clips are coming from Pittsburgh's season finale last year against the Ravens. Porter, when he came out of college, was billed as excelling in two coverages. He was a man cover corner. He was a cover two guy. And the Steelers do a great job of showcasing them, him in those schemes. They really tailor their coverage to his strengths. And so we'll look at him in both instances. So here he's in a cover two shell. This is him down here at the bottom of the screen, number 24. Pittsburgh's in a cover two. There's a second safety just out of your screen up here. You'd be able to see the cover two a little easier. And the job of a cover two corner is you are responsible for any flat routes. But if no flat routes show, then you're going to sink with anything vertical. So what Baltimore's going to do here is they're going to show him an in-breaking route and try to get him to bite. They got a little, a little eye candy motion here to start to try to get the Steelers to move that way. And then they're going to take this receiver, the number one receiver, and run him on an in-breaking route to try to get Porter to go with it. Because what they really want to do here is they're going to sneak the back out up the sideline on a wheel. Porter's got to be able to get his hands on the end right here and then adjust and get on to the wheel. He almost stays a little too long here. Watch him on the jam as he sinks inside. He's a hair late, hair late getting back out on that wheel, but his length is so uh, important to him, makes it so difficult for a quarterback to throw over, right? Look at it, look at it right here. I'll go a hair further, right? When you pause it right there, look at Porter close, right? He had probably that back had a step or two on him at the 30 yard line. We'll run it through one more time so you can see. But by the time you get to the, the contact point at the 40, Porter, Porter has gotten hip to hip, which is exactly where you want to be, and is closed. I mean, again, the back, Porter's in recovery mode right now, and while the back's not technically ahead of Porter, he's in good position because Porter's just turning his hips to run. And that closing speed and that length is integral to him being able to make plays like this, but he also does a really nice job recognizing his coverage responsibility. Hands on, sink, run with the vertical, make a play. Here's another cover two rep. This is Porter down here at the bottom of the screen, and same responsibility. He's got anything that shows in the flat, but he's got to carry anything vertical first. So Baltimore's going to run kind of a classic cover two beater where they're just going to take the outside receiver and run him vertical and the, now the back here into the flat. So when Porter sees the back come, he's going to release the vertical route. And this safety now, it's his job once Porter releases. So you'll see Porter sink and now he's going to come up when the flat route shows. And now this safety's got to get over and take the vertical. So it's really important for the corner to be able to sink far enough with the vertical route to close that window. Right, The, the cover two window is, is kind of like right in here between where the corner closes on the flat route and the safety gets over. Corner's got to close that window, but he can't sink so far that he gives up the flat. And you'll watch here as Porter does this really perfectly. He gets his hands on zone turn. I'll talk about that in a minute. As soon as he sees the flat route, he reacts. Bad ball here by Tyler Huntley, the backup quarterback in Baltimore. But obviously you see Porter quickly. Right here he's recognized that Huntley, uh, that a flat route is showing. And he's done a good enough job of sinking with the vertical so that if Huntley wanted to fit that thing in, right, the safety's right here. You really can't see the safety, but the safety's got only about 10, 12 yards to cover uh, because 
Porter's done a good enough job carrying this vertical that Huntley can't throw the ball early. And now Porter's going to drive up on the flat route. The, even if this is a good throw, you're going to see that Porter's going to make this tackle for no, no gain. The running back's probably lucky that it's not a good throw because there's a pretty good chance that Porter would have tattooed him right about there. If that, if that had been a good throw on the money, everybody can see you know, what was, what was going to happen there. This was going to be a, a bad result for the running back. So this is another really good rep for Porter one more time all the way through in terms of his recognition zone turn watch him turn into the field there that's a zone turn that means that he's not locked on the man he's turning into the field so he can see all the other routes develop textbook wreck by Joey Porter right here all right as good as Porter is in zone coverage and I'll, I'll show you another zone rep uh, in a minute he really excels in man coverage here you see him press man to the top of the screen uh, one, of the, one of the reasons he excels is he's so good at staying square on the release of the receiver. And by that, I mean keeping his shoulders square to the receiver so he doesn't turn and give up leverage. So you watch this off a play-action look, and Baltimore, is, this is going to be a sack here. You see Porter attached to the hip of the receiver, doesn't give the quarterback any, any window to throw into, and Mark Robinson comes in for the sack. But let's take a look at why this is such a good rep from Porter. All right, right off of the bat, I probably went a little further than I want to there, right? Well, I'll go back to the beginning, right? Right off the bat, this is a great rep because look how square Porter is already. The receiver took a little stick jab, right? He stuck his foot outside and then he worked back inside. The, Porter knows where his leverage is here, right? His leverage uh, is should be outside in because here's his help back here. He wants to funnel anything inside and not give up the outside route because the safety here is his help. And that's exactly what he does. He also does a great job of sticking right to the hip. I mean, look at him there, man. You know, you're, you're 10 yards down the field and Porter's just tracking the near hip. He's got help to the inside. He's underneath the route. So any outbreaking route, right? If, the, if this thing's going to go outside, your Porter's got the inside leverage. You're, you're going to have to throw over him to get the ball to the receiver and Porter will stick to the hip on the outcut. I mean, there's just zero chance that you can complete this pass because the fundamentals are so good. Here's another really solid rep this time, Porter, at the bottom of the screen. Going to defend a little dig route, a little in-breaking route. Watch the patience at the release. I love how patient he is. Receiver now wants to go in, so he's going to stick outside and then try to work across Porter's face. All right, so watch again as he stays square. Look at the, the jab step outside, right? You can see that the receiver down here now, he's jabbed out, and Porter's just kind of shuffled with him, staying square, not turning his shoulders, not giving up the in-break by turning his shoulders, and that allows him to immediately get back inside with the receiver. I love what he does right here. He's a little handsy early in that rep, and if the, if the officials wanted to apply the letter of the law, they probably could have thrown a flag for being a little handsy. But as he recognizes that, that the receiver is going to go in, he gets under him. He gets underneath him. He doesn't want to be running side by side. He doesn't want to be right here. Like, you don't want Porter to be right here uh, on the side of the receiver because when that in-break occurs, the receiver is going to run to open grass. So instead, Porter gets underneath the route so that now when the in-break occurs, look what he can do. He can undercut it. And this is not where the football goes, obviously. But if it was going to go there, there's zero chance this would be completed because Porter's actually under the route. Porter's in a better position to catch the football than the receiver is. So he gets leverage. He's patient. He knows when to get his hands off for the most part, but man, he really understands where that route's going to go and he anticipates it and puts himself in position to make plays. Here's one more rep in man coverage. Back to the top of the screen now. Uh, on this one, another, another in-breaking routes. Teams better just knock it off with the in-breaking routes because you're not hitting them against Porter. Same thing, patient at the line of scrimmage, and then he'll get underneath the route as it breaks in, right, hands on under the hip. He actually anticipates the in cut and gets inside the receiver. You see him do that little pirouette to regain the better position. I'll pause it up there in a second. Right? Watch him right here. He's inside the receiver. He knows really where this route's going to break. If it's going to break outside, he can get under it and use his length 
to make the QB have to throw over him. And if it's going to break inside, well, again, he's going to be in better position to catch the football than the receiver is. I like that move right there where he peer, sort of pirouetted around and, and look at him reaching out right there with his right hand, right? You see him with his right hand here just to sort of feel for where the receiver is. All right, what he was doing there was that he was getting his head back to the ball quickly and, and you know, anticipating a throw from the quarterback. But this is in breakdown mode and they're going to wind up throwing it away. So, again, zero chance that you can complete the pass to the man Porter's covering. I said I'd show you another zone rep. Here the Steelers look like they're impressed man, but they're not. They're going to rotate to a cover three look here. This is Porter up top, and in cover three, he's going to wind up being responsible for the deep outside third. This is Levi Wallace down here. He's going to have deep outside third, and then this safety right here is going to wind up having the deep middle third, and then the Steelers are going to disperse their underneath defenders into the flat and the hooks and the flats, etc. But the thing I like about this route is watch how quickly Porter recognizes the vertical release from the motion man, number 16. He realizes right away this is going to be a wheel, and he's off on his horse and running. I mean, Porter's stacking the route right now, and you're already 15, 16 yards down the field by stacking the route. I mean, he's on top of the route. He knows that this is vertical, and there's no way for you to complete this thing over top of him. He recognized that pretty quickly, by the way. Watch again as we go from the top. Uh, watch how quickly he turns and bails and runs. Now, granted, he's got to get into a deep third, right? He's got, he understands that I've got, I've got to get, I'm, I'm here right now, and I'm responsible for anything deep and vertical, and this guy's already turned and wheeling, but he recognizes really, really quickly that's going to be a vertical concept. So he's not, he's not sort of sitting on an outcut or anything like that. He's, this is probably film study. You know, I don't know exactly what he sees or what, or what he saw in his film study, but you're going to get a post and then the wheel up the sideline, and that's probably something he recognized that allowed him to get an early jump on the route. But again, once again, zero chance you're going to catch the football if you're throwing it in Joey Porter's direction. All right, so what did you see there, man? You saw a lot of really great fundamental work, a lot of really great technique work. You saw a guy who's patient, who understands leverage, who understands and anticipates route concepts, who knows how to use his length. Really a great tactician. You know what you didn't see? You didn't see him doing anything sexy. You didn't see any interceptions. You didn't even see any pass breakups. You know why you didn't see any pass breakups? Because Baltimore targeted him one time. That little flat route in cover two, which I don't even know if you can call that a target. That's the only ball they threw at Porter all game. And it was a bad throw that wasn't caught. They didn't throw any balls in his direction. And it, that might be the best compliment you can, you can give a corner. And that might be the reason why Joey Porter's claim that he's already the league's best cornerback may not be as far-fetched as it could seem to some. So Joey Porter, already among the elite corners, and the film doesn't lie. All right, this is another Steelers playbook. Kevin Smith, have a great week, everybody.